In this video, we're going to see center tapped full wave rectifier, the concept behind it, its working, and some of its parameters like IDC, IRMS, I-RMS, and form factor. To start with, let me take a half wave rectifier, which we have studied in detail from previous videos, to which we are supplying a sinusoid input waveform and the half wave rectifier would give us only the positive half of the wave at the output and during the negative half of the wave we'll have zero value. In this we have seen the average value was somewhere here which is nothing but the DC value. Let's say if this is the output current then the IDC value was IM over pi. So I am, let's say, is the peak value here. So the same way, if you assume this is voltage, then the VDC would be VM, the peak value over pi. Now, obviously, let's say we give the same sinusoid waveform to a full wave rectifier, in which case the output waveform would be like this. Let's say comparing to half wave rectifier, the area under this waveform is, let's say, A, now in this case we have for this area it will be A and even this it will be A. So the total area under the curve would be 2A divided by the total angle which is 2 pi. So 2A divided by 2 pi. In fact in half wave rectifier it was A divided by 2 pi which we got peak value divided by pi. So in this case we would get because the entire thing is multiplied by two times because we got the negative half of the wave also converted to positive half and given output. The average value, let's say if you are talking about the current IDC, would become two times IM over pi, which means the DC component or the average value would become double in case of a full wave rectifier. In fact, in a rectifier, we want to get the DC component as high as possible. So obviously, full wave rectifier would be the right one. Now, how do we get a full wave rectifier? To start with, as we know, only half wave rectifier. If one half wave rectifier can give us one half of the wave at the output, can we use two half wave rectifiers to create or make a full wave rectifier? So the concept here is we will take two half wave rectifiers let's say first one half wave rectifier one and another one let's say this is half wave rectifier two let's say the input waveform we're going to have is like this and obviously half wave rectifier one would give us an output like this indicating that positive half of the wave is actually given at the output so here over the period of two pi 0 to 2 pi, the first half wave rectifier has given the output. Now we want the second half wave rectifier to give an output for the second half. We are assuming that in the first half we would need 0 and in the second half we need a sinusoid wave coming out but that should be positive of course. So in this range of 2 pi, the first half wave rectifier would give us the output sinusoid for the angle between 0 and pi and the second one would give us when the angle is in between pi and 2 pi. But how do we get this second half of the wave positive? We can get that only if the input waveform let's say from here is inverted which means in this case this positive half was given by the half wave rectifier at the output and in the second we are getting it for the second half of the wave. But now, which means the input waveform, if it is like this, we are giving to the first half wave rectifier exact input, and for the second half wave rectifier, we are going to give a inverted input. So let's call the voltage that we are applying here is uh, VA, and the voltage that we are applying at the half wave rectifier 2 is VP, and the voltage reference, let's say, is VI, the input voltage. Now obviously we want a waveform as shown for the full wave rectifier above. So we need to actually add these two waveforms and get an output like this. So if we broadly look at this, 
we need a circuitry which would take this sinusoid as input and we're going to get output like this. I mean here we have three things. So first thing we need two half wave rectifiers and the input waveform to be inverted to one of the half wave rectifier and the third one is to add the outputs of both the half wave rectifiers. We know the half wave rectifier circuit which is a diode this is let's say D1 indicating the half wave rectifier number one and indicating the second half wave rectifier we have another diode here let's call that D2 and both of their outputs are connected together and a load is connected to it so that we are adding the output currents of the two half wave rectifiers together and sending it through a single load resistor which means the addition which we are showing here is taken care of by taking a single load. Now the only missing part is how do we get the inversion of the input wave. So for that we have a concept in transformers that is if you take the primary transformer and let me take the secondary winding here. So in the secondary transformer we are going to do a center tapping where the number of turns on the upper side and the number of turns on the lower side are exactly same. Let's say the number of turns on the top side here are N2 and even the bottom side would be exactly same which is N2 and the primary winding number of turns let's say is N1. Then we say this is center tapped transformer which is having N1 to N2 ratio. So here we have the main supply at the primary winding and we have the voltage as reference that we are taking that is VI here and it would be the same even in the bottom side. These two voltages would be exactly same because the number of turns are exactly same on the top side as well as on the bottom side. Now what happens in center tap cases? So if you take this is a point A and this is point B, VI, the voltage at point A would be VI. Let's say VI is sinusoid, then at point A it would be sinusoid. But if we observe here as it is center tapped and grounded, so the bottom side at point B, the voltage would be minus VI. So there would be inversion of the waveform here. So this is the most important point. So let me write this down here that we have VI voltage where VA will be equal to VI and VB will be equal to minus VI which means we got inversion here. That's what we are looking for. So now everything is set that we have inversion of the wave and two half wave rectifiers are present. Each half wave rectifier is working on one half of the sinusoid waveform and both the outputs of the rectifiers are added together and sent through the same load. So now we can say when VA is positive D1 is on and it would allow current to flow through and it flows through the load resistor. This is during alpha between 0 and pi. This is corresponding to first half of the wave at point A during which D2 would be off because during that time we have a negative cycle at point B. Hence D2 would be off. Now coming to the second half of the wave, at point A we have negative half of the wave due to which diode 1 would be off but at point B the voltage would be positive because the voltage at B is minus VI hence D2 would be on. As a result the current would flow through the D2 and it flows through the load resistor. This current flow would be corresponding to the angle in between pi and 2 pi. Now let's write the instantaneous current equation. Before that let me write what is Vi, the input voltage. Let's say that is Vm sin omega t where omega t is taken as alpha. Now the instantaneous current that is flowing through the circuit when the angle is in between 0 and pi D1 is on and D2 is off during which current is flowing through D1 that current would be equal to VA over 
RF, the forward resistance of the diode D1, plus the load resistor RL. So VA is nothing but VI, so hence we can write VM over RF plus RL times sine alpha. Whereas when the angle is in between pi and 2 pi, we have D1 off and D2 on. In this case, the current would be VB over RF plus RL, but as VB is negative of VI, so we can write minus Vm over Rf plus Rl times sin alpha. Now if you observe here, sin alpha value itself would be negative in this alpha range. The negative of negative would be positive. Hence the output current if we can draw here corresponding to this current equation would be like this. As we are talking about current, this peak value let's say is IM. So we can say center tapped full wave rectifier is nothing but two separate half wave rectifiers operating on alternate half cycles. Here I have drawn the waveforms corresponding to the input voltage and the output voltage. We can see that input voltage is a sinusoid and the output voltage is magnitude of the input voltage. I have written the current equation here. Now let's find the first parameter that is the DC output current, which means the DC output current, which is nothing but the average value of the output current. As we have the waveform here, let's just find that out. I DC is equal to average value of instantaneous current which is 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi i times d alpha and of course we know the value straight away that it will be twice that of the half wave rectifier but for completeness sake we're deriving it here that is equal to 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to pi sine alpha of course we have i m that i'm taking it out d alpha plus integral pi to 2 pi i m is present of course there is a minus sign minus sine alpha d alpha now this is equal to i m by 2 pi we know the integration of sine alpha is minus cos alpha 0 to pi for the first integral plus minus of minus plus so we get cos alpha pi to 2 pi so we can write this as i m by 2 pi cos pi is minus 1 so minus of minus plus 1 again minus of minus plus cos 0 is 1 so we have 1 plus 1 for the first one plus for the second one cos 2 pi is 1 minus cos pi is minus 1 so minus of minus plus 1 so this is equal to 4 i m by 2 pi we can say i dc is equal to 2 i m by pi as we already said it is going to be twice that of the half wave rectifier now let's find the rms value of the output current calling i rms i rms is given by square root of 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi square of the instantaneous value of the current times d alpha so to have it simplified we'll try to find what is irms square which is 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi i square d alpha in fact as we are squaring the current if you remember that the I equation here is magnitude of sine value which is let's say we have a sinusoid here the current is actually magnitude of sinusoid now if this is sine and this is magnitude of sine alpha when we take both of them by squaring we would get the same waveform for both it will simply be sine square alpha so hence either we take magnitude of sine alpha or sine alpha 
when we square it it's going to be exactly same so we'll simply substitute i is equal to i m sine alpha so i rms square is equal to i'll take the i m square out divided by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi i square is nothing but now i m square is already outside so sine square alpha d alpha so this will be equal to i m square over 2 pi sine square alpha can be written as in the integration 0 to 2 pi 1 minus cos 2 alpha over 2 so if i take the 2 outside it becomes 4 times d alpha so this is equal to i m square over 4 pi times integration of 1 minus cos 2 alpha so integration of 1 is alpha and integration of cos 2 alpha is sine 2 alpha over 2 this is over 0 to 2 pi obviously sine 2 times 2 pi would be 0 and sine would be 0 so this entire term would become 0 anyways so only for alpha we have to substitute 2 pi and 0 then we would get i m square over 4 pi times 2 pi so this is equal to i m square over 2 so i rms will be equal to i m over square root 2 and the other parameter we have looked at is form factor which was simply given by f f was equal to i rms over i dc so this is equal to rms value is i m over square root 2 and dc value is 2 i m by pi so this will be equal to pi over 2 times square root 2 so this is form factor now another very important value is the rms value rms value of ac component of the output current so this we called i dash rms so this in fact was derived if the output current is i which we said can be written in terms of dc and ac components where i dc is the dc component of the output current i and i prime is the ac component of the output current then we said we want to find the rms value of this ac component that's what is called i dash rms we found this equation that i dash rms would be equal to square root of i rms square minus i dc square we know both the values i rms value and i dc value we can substitute and get what is i dash rms we're going to use this term in ripple factor which will be discussed in the next video if you like the video please press the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching